You've got one book that has been on the top list, I mean, for, <laughs> it seems like forever, and now you've got another one. Yeah. What are we doing this time? Uh, you mean what's next, or? Right. Uh, uh, the, the Pelican Brief, tell me about it. Well, it was published March the 1st, um, so it's been out about, um, I guess, about six weeks now. Um, obviously selling very well. Um, it, you know, another legal suspense book, sort of long, you know, along the same lines as The Firm. Uh, I'll stick with that genre probably for several more books. Okay, if they can hear me in the control room, he's sort of died out and I can't hear him at all. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, barely, but we can we can do it. You can you can barely hear me now. Now I can hear you better. Okay. All right. Maybe I was fading out. Maybe I just sort of quit talking. <laughs> no. The Pelican Brief um, and the firm have both been bought for motion pictures. Now I heard. That's correct. Yes. Two movies at the same time. Yeah. Are you going to be involved in any of them? As in any facet, will you be you know consultant or how that work? I have no plans to get involved with uh, with either movie. Uh, Paramount bought the rights to the firm two years ago. Uh, they have been in Memphis for about two months scouting locations. Uh, Sidney Pollock, excuse me, was in town last week. Uh, he's going to direct it. He was uh, looking at some locations in Memphis, and I think they probably are going to start sometime in late fall. Uh, it appears as though uh, Mitch, Ma I mean, uh, Mitch McDeer will be played by Tom Cruise. Uh, that's not, I don't think he signed a contract yet, but um, it appears as though that's going to happen. Uh, that's about all I know about the movie of the firm. Um, the Pelican Brief, Alan Pakula bought the rights last fall. Being from Chicago, you know that Alan Pakula did Presumed Innocent and uh, did a, you know, made a good movie out of it. Um, it's going to be a Warner Brothers picture. Uh, I'll have a bit more input into the Pelican Brief than I will with the, than I will with the firm. Now, in the Pelican Brief, what can you tell people about the story? Uh, what, what do you think attracts people to your books? What attracts people to the books? Uh, first of all, they're very good stories. I mean, they have good plots. Uh, and I spend a lot of time you know, thinking about plots or stories with, with legal backgrounds, a legal setting. And uh, I deliberately try to, you know, uh, conceive of a story that is um, very suspenseful and fun to read. I mean, uh, you know, we're not talking about serious literature here. This, this is, uh, I, I aspire to write a high quality of commercial fiction. That's all I'm trying to do. Uh, but I, I want to get the reader involved in the book. I want the reader to read the book very quickly. I, I, uh, you know, I'm happy when people lose sleep reading the books. Uh, that's all intentional. And, and, you know, that plus the fact that um, uh, there's always been a, a big market uh, for books about uh, the law, cases, trials, firms, things like that. Um, and, and that's not a recent phenomenon. It's happened for many years. Uh, but Americans love to read those types of stories. Do you find as an author that some of the other authors that you've seen or know are starting to tend to make their books almost uh, more for the film, you know, for, for the film medium? Oh, sure. I mean, yeah, you can read some um, some books and you can just, you know, you can, uh, you, it's almost like reading a screenplay. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, some writers deliberately try to do that and it works. I mean, uh, if it's a good story, it's going to work. Um, I've been accused of doing that. Um, I've been accused of, uh, I was accused of writing The Firm just for the movie, um, which is ludicrous. When I wrote The Firm, I didn't know if it was going to be published as a book, let alone a movie. How do you get some of your ideas for your stories? I mean, do you, do you sit with them for a few months, for yeah. a year, for two years? Yeah, but all that. I mean, uh, some ideas uh, uh, I'll think about for a year or two, and um, uh, rattle it around, you know, and try to try to put it together and try to make it work. And and uh, the ideas come from, you know, the law first of all, the legal profession, uh, current events. Uh, I try to be timely and topical. Um, you know, I, I spend. I, I mean, I really make a conscious effort every day uh, to think about stories. I may not, you know, if I get a good story, I may not write it for a couple, three years. But I, you know, I'm always thinking about the stories, and I, I'll, I'll, I still read some legal publications, and 
and I read about cases and, you know, try to keep up with it. That's where the ideas come from. What can we look for next? What are you currently working on another book? Yeah, I'm so I just, just uh, got started with the next novel. Uh, the book tour is over April, uh, May 1. I'll go back home and uh, spend this summer uh, writing the next novel. Uh, probably come out next spring, uh, March or April. And it'll be another legal suspense type book. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm going to do things different in every book. I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to give the appearance. I'm just, I've got a formula. I'm cranking them out. Uh, I hope to get better with each book. Uh, I'm certainly going to try. So, how long did it take to write, like, uh, the Pelican Brief? How long did it take to write that? Uh, about three or four months. Uh, basically last summer. Um, now there's, I mean, there's a lot of hours every day. It's, it's you know, seven days a week, six and a half, seven days a week, uh, six to ten hours a day, um, averaging anywhere from six to ten pages of manuscript a day. I mean, it's a lot of, it's a very brief period of time, but it's very uh, intense. And, and when you're one of those author who likes to use the old-fashioned typewriter or more computer processor? Oh, I got, a, I got a pretty fancy rig now with, uh, you know, a computer with... Uh, uh, Word Perfect software and laser printers and fax machines. I mean, I'm plugged into the world. You know, I live in Oxford on a farm, but I'm I'm pretty much plugged in. As a writer, I mean, now you 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 you've pretty much become famous. I mean, you've got Sidney Pollack, or Pollack directing a film. What does it feel like? Has it met your expectations? Uh, I don't. Uh, I didn't have any expectations. Um, I, I mean, looking back, I don't know what I used to think about. I used to think about. I can remember dreaming about how nice it would be to write for a living and about um, it'd be fun to be on the New York Times bestseller list. Uh, it'd be fun to see people read my books. Yeah, I, I thought about those things and it's that, all that's fun. I mean, I, every time I see somebody reading the book now, I get tickled. Um, but I never really thought much about the movies because that was just something that came out of nowhere. I, I just didn't, I didn't see that happening. Um, you know, I just take it all in stride. I'm sort of amused by a lot of it. I, I don't consider myself to be famous. I don't consider myself to be a celebrity. I've never wanted those things. Uh, you know, and, and you got you to call time out and back up and look at it a little bit. Um, it's not like people recognize me on the street. I'm a writer, you know, uh, and we live in a society that does not read. You know, if I was uh, a TV actor, I guess I'd be famous. But, uh, uh, you know, it, it hadn't reached the point yet to where it's a hassle. For my final question, um, what appealed to you? I mean, if you could sort of separate yourself, what appealed to you about the Pelican Brief as a reader? I mean, if you were to read the book, what, if what, I were to read fact, the book, what sticks in your mind about the book? It's a unique idea because you're talking about the deaths of two, the murders of two U.S. Supreme Court justices, okay? That has never obviously it's never been done we, we haven't lost a justice uh, to my knowledge there have been no attempts on the justices uh, we've had you know dozens of attempts on presidents and other people it's it's a it's an original story uh, and the pacing of it it's a fast read I, I you know I like to read a book that's three or four hundred pages long only Pat Conroy can take me over 500 pages you know uh, I, I like a I like a good fast book uh, to entertain uh, and that, that's what would appeal to me, yeah. I appreciate the time you spent with us today. My pleasure, Barry. Thanks again. Bye-bye.